Hello, Chemistry 12. This is Mr. Chen. And today what I wanted to do was continue on with uh, chemical equilibrium. Now, last day, remember when we had talked about our notes, we, when we introduced chemical equilibrium, remember we talked about some of the conditions of chemical equilibrium. And one of them that I talked about and I said that I would touch on later on was the second bullet, if conditions change in the equilibrium, then the reaction rearranges itself or shifts until a new equilibrium is established. What I wanna to do today is I wanna concentrate on this second bullet. And this is what we call Le Chatelier's principle. So when we said that the equilibrium will shift, it can be summarized by this Le Chatelier's principle. It basically states this, when a stress, example change in concentration, temperature, volume, or pressure is placed on an equilibrium system, okay, the equilibrium will shift to offset or counteract the applied stress, resulting in a new equilibrium. Now, there is some vocabulary terms that you should be aware of. When we're talking about stress, so in equilibrium, when we talk about stress, is basically anything that changes the original equilibrium. Temperature, volume, pressure, concentration. That's our stress. And the other word that you want to be aware of is what is meant by shift, okay? So when we say the word shift, when we talk about equilibrium, is the rate that is initially faster. So, which rate, the forward or the reverse rate, is initially faster? They will eventually equal again, going back to equilibrium, but when we talk about shift, we're looking at which rate is initially faster, okay? Now, some general stresses. Let's say we had a change in concentration. The equilibrium will shift in the direction to offset the change. Now, what do I mean by this? So let's say we have a general equation of our reactant is in equilibrium with product. Now, when I say reactant and when I say product, it could be one reactant, two reactant, three reactant, whatever. Okay, so I'm just using the term reactant as a general descriptor. Okay, I don't wanna be like uh, very specific. So let's say here is our stress. So what happens is we have our stress. So what are we going to change? In this case, let's say we increase the concentration of our reactant. Okay. So if we increase <clears throat> the concentration of our reactant, going back to reaction kinetics, remember when you increase the concentration, if we go back up here, I think it's right here, okay? If we increase our concentration, what happens to the rate? The rate will increase. And so this is what we're talking about in terms of our shift. So in this case, because our reactant concentration has gone up, what will happen is the forward rate where we go from reactants to products rate will be initially. And the key word is initially, initially be faster. Okay, and the key word is initially faster. Now, another way you can describe it in some books, they will say it will shift to the right, shift to the products or to the right, or you could say forward rate is 
increasing. Okay, so you can say forward rate increasing or shift to the products or shift to the right or forward rate increases. Okay. Now, what would be the result? As this reaction proceeds, the concentration of my products will go up. Why is because I am increasing my concentration of products. I'm making more products because the forward rate is faster. Okay. Now, one thing you should be aware of, the result is the products will go up, okay? And what happens is the concentration of the reactants will go down. Now, I'm gonna put a star with this one, talking about the reactants going down, because I wanna talk about that a little bit later on, okay? So this is what is meant by equilibrium shifting, all right, or Le Chatelier shift. So the equilibrium will respond to counteract the shift, okay? Now, if I were to say, oh, what happens if you decrease the reactant? That's my stress. So if I decrease the reactant, the shift will be towards the left, all right? And the resulting, pro resulting is that the reactants will go up and the products will go down. Okay, and this is what I will be covering a little bit in class uh, later on. Okay. Now, another shift that could happen, or another stress, could be a change in pressure. Now, when we talk about change in pressure, it only applies for gases only, as due to a volume change. Okay. Now. How will that respond? So an increase in pressure will shift the equilibrium in the direction of fewer molecules, okay? This will only occur if you have an unequal number of part moles of gases on either side of the equilibrium, okay? Now, what do I mean by this? So let's say if I have an equation here. So let's say we have two hydrogen gas and one oxygen gas. What will happen is we have two water molecules gas. Now, if we take a look at the number of moles here. So here we have three moles in total, here we have two moles in total. So let's say if we have our stress, so let's say we have our stress, let's say we have our shift, let's say we have our result, If I increase the pressure, or decrease the volume, according to our notes, it will favor the side, let's see, sorry, it'll favor the side with fewer particles. Okay, so in this particular case, what happens is which side has fewer particles? It is the product side. So in this particular case, the shift will be to the products. So we shift to the products or to the right. And the result is that we have an increase in the concentration of our products. Okay, now, <coughs> excuse me. 
The thing you have to be aware of is a couple of things. First of all, I want you to be aware that if you take a look at the stress, increase in pressure, decrease in volume. Now, notice that pressure and volume are inversely related. As one goes up, the other goes down. Oh, I just wanted to show you an example of what I mean by this. So let's do there. Okay. So let's do a new share. So I have a little stuffy. Okay. This is given to me by a former student. Now with this stuffy, if I increase the pressure, notice what happens to my stuffed animal. It gets smaller. Okay. So the volume decreases with an increase in pressure. If I have less pressure, notice the stuffy gets bigger. So that's one thing for you to be aware of, all right, is that the inverse relationship between pressure and volume. The other thing that you should be aware of is this, okay? So here, the only reason why the equilibrium shifted is because I have an unequal moles of reactants to products. I have three moles on the reactant, two moles on my product. So it favors the side with fewer particles. All right, now here's an example of what I mean by favors the side with fewer particles. So let's give an example here, was it right here, okay? So what I have is I have 2N2NO2, N2O4. So notice if I take a look at the little spheres, all right, I have two molecules of N2O4, while I have two, four, six molecules of NO2. When I compress it, it pushes towards, it favors the side with fewer particles. Why? You could think of it an easy way since there's less space, it wants to favor the side with fewer particles, okay? It's like a house party. If you have a small house party, you can only have fewer number of people. The larger number of people, notice here, I increase the volume, I decrease the pressure. Notice it favored the reactant side because the reactant side was two moles, versus the product, which was one mole. So again, bigger the volume, bigger spaces, more particles. All right, now let me show you another one. And let's take a look at here. Now in this case, we have hydrogen iodine and hydrogen iodide. So you notice in the purple is iodine, the two yellows is the hydrogen, and the yellow purple is the hydrogen iodide. Now, if I were to compress it, notice the number of particles doesn't change. Okay, you still have two of the yellow spheres, two of the pure purple spheres, and two of the yellow purple. Why is that? Okay, and again, the reason why is because there's equal number of moles on both the left and the right side. So there is no advantage for shifting to the left or to the right. There's no need for compensation, okay? So that is talking about change in pressure due to volume. Now, for those of you in AP, please be aware. If the change in pressure is due to an addition of a non-reactive gas like neon, then there will be no shift. This is due to the fact that the partial pressure of each substance hasn't changed, and so an equilibrium shift is not required. So I'm just gonna make note here, this is for AP. Okay, now how does that work? So if we were to have the example of hydrogen plus oxygen, oh, this should be O2, not O, uh-huh. Okay. Now, if we were to add neon gas, what happens is, yes, neon gas does increase the pressure because there's more particles. 
but because it does not change the concentration of hydrogen, concentration of oxygen, and the concentration of water in the original equilibrium, there is no shift. So again, if we add something like neon, yes, the pressure increases because we have more uh, particles, but because the concentration, or since we're talking about gas, the partial pressure hasn't changed, the equilibrium will not shift. Okay. The last one is the change, the last two is the change in temperature. Now, an increase in temperature will favor the rate of the endothermic reaction. Okay, an increase in temperature will favor the rate of the endothermic reaction. Now, you might say, well, what do you mean by endothermic, Mr. Chan? You taught us that there were exo and endothermic reactions. Okay. Now, when you look at equilibrium, remember, you have to look at it from the forward direction, which is reactants going to products, and the reverse reaction, which is products going back to reactants. So in this particular case, let's say we had, uh, why is my, okay. So here, if we looked in the forward direction, Notice the energy is considered in the products. So this would be our exothermic reaction. If we looked at it in the reverse direction, in the reverse, going from products back to reactants, this would be endothermic. Okay, so we have to look at it in two directions. Now, you might say, okay, Mr. Chan, so in this example that you have where you have hydrogen plus iodine gives you hydrogen iodide plus energy, what type of reaction is that? In this case, I would say it is an exothermic reaction because the forward reaction going from reactants to products, the energy is in the product term. But be aware in the back of your mind that if we were to do the reverse reaction, it'd be endothermic. Now, if the temperature increases, the equilibrium will shift towards the reactants, increasing H2 and I2 and decreasing HI. Now, why is that? And that's because the reaction is initially at a constant temperature. When the temperatures increase, the reaction will want to suck in the extra heat, and therefore, it will need to go back towards the reactants. Now, what do I mean by this? So it's probably pretty easy drawing it graphically. So let's say we have a line here, and this is my original temperature. Okay, now, when I increase the temperature, okay, so if I increase my temperature, this is my stress. So here's my due temperature. Okay, now this is causing a stress. The new temperature is a stress. So what happens is you want to bring that temperature down back to the original temperature. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to decrease the temperature or energy.
what type of reaction makes the temperature go down or makes the energy go down. Therefore, you need an endo reaction. Okay? So what happens is, because the temperature is too high, you need to decrease the temperature. And when we're talking about decreasing a temperature, we're talking about endothermic reaction. Okay? Now, conversely, let's say you are, let's say we made our reaction colder. Let's say this is my decrease in temperature. Again, this is my stress. So again, this is my new temperature. Okay? Now, what you want to do is you want to increase the temperature to get it back to the original. So you need to increase the temperature or energy. <clears throat> energy. Therefore, you need the exothermic reaction is favored. <clears throat> Here I should put endothermic reaction favored. Okay. Why is the exothermic reaction favored? Because since you need to increase the temperature, to increase the temperature, <clears throat> you need to produce energy. To produce energy, that would be an exothermic reaction. Okay? Now, the last one is this. A catalyst has no effect <clears throat> on equilibrium. It only affects how fast the system gets to equilibrium. So in this case, let's say if we had our original equation, 2H2 gas plus O2 gas gives you 2H2O gas. If we added a catalyst, that's my stress. No shift. Because of the fact that it's already at equilibrium, you don't, there's no shift. Okay? So that is the effect of Le Chatelier principle. So we went over catalyst. We went over change in temperature. We've talked about the change in pressure. And then we talked about concentration. All right, folks. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And we'll talk about graphing Le Chatelier shifts uh, in the next video.